Welcome back to another episode of the Outlast Podcast. I am Travis. I am Ron the Roofer. Today we are going to talk about why all contractors are not the same. They're not, man. They're not. Yep. So, um, Ron, um, separating yourselves from the competition sometimes is uh, it seems it seems like it can be kind of hard, um, you know. But uh, talk a little talk a little bit about uh, you know a little bit about that that subject so the, the viewers can kind of listen well, on to what you what you're thinking. Well, you know, it's, it's it's very important to separate yourself from the pack first, you know, because uh, you know. If, it's always a generic, hey, look at our Google reviews, look at us, look at, you know, look at the materials we use. You know, if there's, being honest, you know, the top three competitors in this area, you know, um, you know, us included. I mean, we're all, we're pretty much, we all use the same shingles, right? We all yeah. have the pretty much same shingles to choose from. We're all platinum, uh, you know, installers for that particular brand or whatever this brand. Um, pretty much, I mean, it's going to be neck and neck, right? So same materials. Uh same this, same that, right? So, so it's, it's, it's basically it's, we're all cookie cutter. We're all it's all kind of cookie cutter. You're getting right? three estimates, and all three people are coming, and they're pitching the same exact thing. Same exact thing, same materials, right? So, of course, if, if you're the customer, you're gonna go with the cheapest guy, right? Because hey, he's using this, and all these guys are using the same thing. So it's gonna come down to price. So it shouldn't come down to price. So you have to do something to separate yourself from that pack. Hey, uh, yeah, we are using those same shingles, but you know, we're going. Five feet past cold or six feet past cold with water and ice shield, things like that. You know, we're using six nails per shingle. Right. Little, stuff like that that kind of separate us from the pack, right? But um, from a homeowner aspect, you got to kind of build that value and, and show them that this is why I'm not this price. And, you know, I'm separating myself from the pack. And, and that's just from a performance side of things. But there's so many different things that I feel like you can do to separate yourself from the pack. And that's... It's, it's so important to separate yourself from the pack. You got to keep reinventing that wheel and, and, and coming up with new ways and different things to kind of stay ahead of the pack and separate yourself, you know. Yep. I know just like recently we got these uh, these dock wristbands and dock cars um, where, you know, if we can tap this right on a customer phone um, and pull up our whole profile or, you know, YouTube or uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, all this stuff where this customer can kind of get to know who we are and get to know us before yeah you know before we we move forward with the process so that's just one of like small things that you know separate yourself from the pack and that's just uh that's that's more of a um marketing thing um like i said i touched a little bit about the performance thing of it but you know as far as you like what can you remember like a situation that kind of separated outlast from the pack of just a cookie cutter contract the guy that's you know yeah, it's other contractors that put the best shingles and use the best under alignment. So what separates you from those guys? So, I mean, it's important to realize that you're always just one step away from being cookie cutter because as you reinvent the wheel, mm -hmm. your competition is going to – you want to be a one step ahead. They're going to try and catch up. Yeah. So, like, the first thing we did was the free roof giveaway. Oh, yeah. Right? We were the first ones to do the free roof giveaway. Yeah. And we weren't the last, right? Yeah, a couple so people we invented that. So then they jumped on that. And now yeah. it's – okay, so now we're not separating ourselves from the competition because – you know, the scragglers finally decided to jump on board. So now we're doing the free roof giveaway with three or four other people. Um, and the next thing, um, you know, that we're that we're doing now is we're gonna we're gonna we decided that we want to we want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Yeah. Um, one thing that nobody else is doing is there's there's a, a recycling program. Um, you know, that owns. Oh, let me stop you there. Let me yeah. stop you there because you said you, you you said something very important. You said you want to be part of the solution. So, you know. For those who don't know, like what was the problem? Let's start. Let, let's start with the problem. Like what was the problem that yeah. the solution that you wanted to be a part of? So what was the problem? The problem was we were working a storm, um, and we were out in this storm, and we were doing you know five five to ten roofs a day on any given day, and yeah. we were we were ordering dumpsters, and we were having you know I don't know maybe twenty tons of shingles a day were going to the landfill just from our company. Was and that, that was, the Hayward, Wisconsin? That storm? was in Hayward. Yeah. Okay, okay. So we're we're dropping we're dropping twenty tons of shingles a day. Other companies are dropping twenty tons of shingles a day and they're all going to the same spot. Um, halfway through the storm we get a call from the guy doing the dumpsters and he says, I can't deliver dumpsters to you guys anymore. No mas, no mas no 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 mas, <laughs> no mas senor because literally the landfill was full. Okay. And at that point Huge problem. That's a huge problem. At that point, it's a huge problem. You know, not just not not just financially, but environmentally as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we all had to start rerouting our shingles to other places that cost more. That cost more money. That yeah. cost more gas. That cost more emissions. Whole to, big problem. Just it big, just steamrolls yeah. a snowballs effect into the next thing. Um, you know, so we started looking at it as a whole, and we said, okay, how? So we we got the problem right. Yeah. 
how do we diagnose this? What can we do to make a difference? And so we, we looked up a few different, um, you know, things. And actually one right in our right in our own wheelhouse is Owens Corning has a recycling pledge. Pink Panther in them, huh? Yep. So they have a recycling <laughs> pledge. So we decided to dive into that a little bit. And what that looks like, um, it really wasn't something that was, you know, too far off for us to accomplish. Yeah. Um, so we decided to be the first one in the area that's going to pledge a certain amount of shingles that we're going to recycle, you know, every year. We're, we're, right now we're going to recycle. Uh, 500? Is it 500? 500 squares this year? It's Yeah, so it's 500 squares of roofing, yeah. uh, which for those that aren't, you know, uh, I guess, you know, well-versed in roofing, yeah. um, that's roughly probably, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 roofs, depending on the size. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a good a good chunk of our roofs. But, um, but you guys, you know, I should say we, we're the first ones that kind of... So we're doing that. We're, yeah, we're doing that, right? So that's one thing. That's separate. That separates you from the competition in the sense that we're the only ones doing that now. However, we don't want it to separate us. We want everybody to jump on board with that. We want to keep reinventing. We the want wheel. to catch like wildfire. We want to catch like wildfire. So, so we're doing that, and the the local customers are starting to see that. They're starting to pick up that. Man, these guys really are like they are. They are on board with this, and we want to be able to help the community, help the world, and then at the same at the same time, everybody else that jumps on board, it's only going to change. When other people decide that, hey, what we see that Outlast Construction is doing, we got to hop on board and do this too. So, sort of like the free roof giveaway and so, uh, things like that. So, like, hey, um, you recognize it was a problem. Yep. Uh, you you figured out a solution. So now you're part of the the solution. Yeah. You took yourself out the problem category. Now you're part of the solution. So I want to I want to talk about the problem that was the free roof giveaway and how that originated. Yeah, the free. Too. I was just going to say, like the free. So being that you we were the first. To kind of do that free roof giveaway, what kind yeah. of catapulted that and started that? Like, what? Why did that even become a thing? Like the free roof giveaway. I mean, it's genius. It's, it's so genius. Um, yeah. But what? I mean, what was this kind of the story behind that? And that was one of the first things that separated Outlast, legitly, from the rest of the pack. So yeah. Talk so a little bit more about it that. It started. So Nicole has always had a heart for giving, right? Yeah. Um, and I have too. I've always been a big softy. Um, but there was this one customer in particular that. I really struggled with because she had taken in her grandkids. Yeah. Um, the the mother and father had some issues, and she was now the the, the sole provider. Sole provider, yeah. Yep. And this house that she was living in it was a big house, but it had lots of valleys, um, and the roof was 35, 40 years old, and yeah. it started leaking everywhere. She she calls me. She's you know I'm talking to her right away. I could just tell this woman had <clears throat> she had a a heart that was pure and I knew yeah. that she I knew she needed help. You know it was genuine. You know you could yep. feel it. Was I knew genuine. she I knew yeah. she needed help and she literally started crying on the phone and we never met each other and she yeah. she literally started calling me her guardian angel and stuff wow. like that and cuz I tried so here's the thing I told her don't worry I'm going to finance you like I know you don't have the money right now we'll figure it out we'll, we'll finance you we have some same as cash options. I want to help. So that's where you put the people first. She was like, put yep. the people first. Yeah. So yep. you're trying to help her, you're trying to get her finance and trying all to help that jazz. Try, yep and I mean uh, Long story. Long story short, um, we were unsuccessful for many, many months until she was able to. She put her she put her nose down and uh, she saved some money. I told I did everything I could on my part. I didn't give away this roof particularly, but what I did do is I came all the way down. I basically did it for cost. Yeah. Cost of materials and labor. Nice. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't take a cut on it. Um, I just I had it. I had I had a feeling for this lady that was that went beyond. You know. That I just wanted to do what was right for her, and and Nicole had my back on it. She was like, you know what, that's great. And then Nicole was like, I think, with how you felt about this job and kind of talking to this lady, Nicole says, I think we have to do a free roof giveaway every year. And and Brian was like, whatever you want, honey. Yeah, you know, that's what kind of started the whole. Whatever you giveaway. want, baby. Yeah. Whatever the warden says goes. And so Nicole Nicole decided to do that. And every year now we've done that. And the people that give it away, um, that we've given the roof away to, um, you know. The families are so deserving, and Nicole, when she hands that check, like it makes her whole year. So you can honestly say, um, you can honestly say from from uh, um, you know from our, we were the first ones doing that free roof giveaway. That was like something that yep that completely separated us from the pack. That was completely like people was kind of looking at us like these guys are crazy. They're giving away a free roof, but it helped that lady so much that she'll forever be grateful for Outlast for doing that and. Um, she doesn't even know that she's the origin of the free roof giveaway. Nice. What she do now? And uh, yep. for anybody that might, you know, for if you have a story, you know, you have uh, some some circumstances. If you want to enter our free roof giveaway, please feel free to go on uh, outlastconstruction.com and enter the free roof giveaway for next year. Yeah. Um, but 
you know, that was like the free roof giveaway. Like, yeah. all our trucks are wrapped in there. They say free roof giveaway on the back, and people think it's a uh, gimmick. But that's kind of where it started from, and it's, it's 100%. It started there, but it's not where it ended, right? Right, like, right, Obviously, right. we have the Wounded Warrior Project. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's one of my favorite, uh, the Wounded Warriors, man. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's another, another story behind that. You know, it's kind of... We used to do like the military discount, but then we, we, we found out we met some really cool people that was part of the Wounded Warrior Project. And then we started just saying, you know what, uh, instead of doing this military discount, let's do this. Uh, let's let's donate some money to Wounded yeah. Warrior Project. We still offer the military discount in a sense that if, they, if they'd if rather us not donate to the to Wounded Warrior Project and they'd mm-hmm. rather just have it, um, obviously that sounds bad. But if they'd want to do that, we still let them do that. But however, the Wounded Warrior Project is something that we, we, we believe in. We have been out here. We've met these, um, you know, we've met these veterans yeah. that have given up so much for our company or oh, for yeah. our world um, that our company has decided that we want to donate a chunk of each job to it. And they, the, the one of the biggest ones, there's, there was a gentleman that we met. Before you, I think you're going to talk about Mike, right? Was it Mike? Yeah. Before you get to Mike, let's just say, uh, I just want to ask you a quick question yeah. before we talk about Mike. Cause yeah. That's, I heard that story. Yeah. And, I mean, I wasn't here out last at that time, but I heard yeah. the story and it kind of, it touched my heart and. I mean, but before we get to Mike, would you say we were, I don't know if we're the only ones, but were we the first ones kind of on that trend as far as donating to the Wounded Warriors in the construction field of things? Over here in this, in the Northland, I, yeah. I do believe we were. I don't think we're the only ones giving military discounts, but we were definitely the first one that says, hey, you know what, a certain percentage of every job. We, is probably, we probably wear the Wounded Warrior patch. I, mean, yep. I, don't, I don't see anybody else, um, and I, I can't say 100% sure, but... I don't really see. I can't say how many you earn, and, and, and you earn those patches. You don't just they don't just give them to you for yeah. for signing up. You literally have you to. Have to you it. have to donate. You have to be a part well, of it. So. I have people literally. Uh, you know, I'll drive somewhere and they'll see a wounded warrior uh, on my on my window, and they'll stop me and say, "Hey, you guys support the wounded warriors?" I'm like, "Absolutely, 100 percent." And uh, you know, I got jobs because of that. You know, just because of our support to that. Yep. To that cause and. Like I said, I haven't personally seen anybody else uh, in this field, in right. this area, um, that do the Wounded Warrior. But that's just something I think that's separated. But talk a little bit more about Mike, man. That's a pretty pretty cool, inspiring story, man. I mean, Mike, so we met Mike out in, um, out in the storm. Um, and Mike needed help, um, you know, with, with navigating in the insurance process. Uh, little did we know we would become, you know, lifelong friends with this guy. He, yeah. You know, he had served, uh, you know, over in Iraq, and he was there for... Uh, several tours and long story short though mike uh mike came back with uh with some ptsd yeah um and and he he opened up to us about all of his struggles with all of, all of these things and uh you know it ended up being you know one of these things that i i went on a, i went on a job to go with mike uh to go bid on one of his jobs we ended up not bidding on it we ended up just taking a boat ride and just talking and just like he opened up to me about his life and I felt like I needed to be, you know, somebody that that was there to listen to him. And yeah. after hearing it and everything, I mean, what he gave up, what he's done for our country, what some of these men and women do for our country. It's amazing. Uh, we just we're here, we're here in the home of the free because of the brave, and we're sitting here with our, you know, our fancy trucks and all the stuff. Yeah. The least we can do is give back. And Mike, Mike ended up, uh, Mike ended up reaching out to us, and you know, Mike's a, Mike's a firm believer in, in Jesus Christ. Um, our Lord and Savior, I think yeah. that's awesome. And he put his faith there, and you know, I, I would I would recommend anybody that's uh, that's struggling with this type of thing uh, to just you know dive into your faith, whatever that is, because yeah. that that got him through it. So I love being a part of this. I love doing this with people like Mike and other veterans too. But when we donate that money towards it, we know it's going towards a good cause. Good cause yeah. Yep. And it, and it's it, it does separate us. And people do want to say, hey, you know, like most most people in this country love our veterans. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, we could probably talk here for three yep. or four days just talking about you know some some stories from the Wounded Warrior and stories from the Free Roof Giveaway and stories from you know just different things that kind of separate us uh, but everything that separates us is, is kind of near and dear to our heart and you know i think um one of the other things i think personally that's you know separate us is um the involvement in the community you know the you know yeah. being a part of churches and and just kind of being a part of you know we got basketball teams we have bowling leagues we have um youth sports that we sponsor parades car shows you know um, just kind of being a part of this whole community and, you know, 
just the other, I mean, just what was it last week? I think it was uh, uh, some sort of race car that had an Outlast Construction logo on it. And come to find out, it was somebody that you sponsored, somebody, somebody uh, that you knew, and you sponsored them. And it's just, yeah, you don't even, you, you don't, you don't, you I never said anything about it because it's yeah. just something that we just do. It's just, I, you don't think twice. You just, yeah, you, you just do it because it's a, it's, it's a, it's the right thing to do, and b, it's just brand recognition. Brand right? recognition and separating yourself from the pack, and absolutely just kind of being a part of your community and. I mean, that's just a small list of things that can, you know, separate you from the pack. And, right, it is, you for know, sure. I mean, the list for us can go on and on and on. And, and the biggest thing about community is, you know, rising tides raise all ships. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, like, if, if they say it's lonely at the top, but it doesn't need to be, right? So if you're doing, if you're doing, you know, right by your community and you're uplifting your competition, it's only going to, it's only going to lift you better, too. It's, it's going to make you better. Stronger, yeah, yep. for sure, for sure. So there's, there's no, there's no pride here literally we just do the right thing because it is the right thing to do and it makes us feel good so um you know i would just say separating yourself because of your morals your values um and and obviously just loving people that's going to separate you um and then obviously just going above and beyond doing all the little extra things that we had touched on yeah putting people first is what i think it all boils down to um but yeah do you know if anybody is out there that's kind of inspired to to start their own thing and they kind of like hey what can i do to separate myself from the pack um, being in that community, that community involvement is huge because the average, the average company, average contractor, they're out chasing storms. They're out, you know, selling residential. They're so busy yep. um, that they don't take the time out for that. Not to say that they're bad people or bad guys, but it's it it takes a it takes some extra time to get up on a Saturday morning and go um, watch this youth football team that you just uh, you know maybe sponsor some T-shirts or donate some T-shirts or uniforms to, but you know. You got to go show face that Saturday morning. You yep. probably don't want to, but it, that's the little things like that that kind of separate separate you from the pack. And um, it's the list goes on, man. Just kind of be different. And be yeah, be different. You know, be be the first. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and make that first move, uh, even if nobody else is doing it. Because chances are they're gonna follow. They're gonna see what you're doing. They're gonna love it. And they're gonna follow suit. Yeah. And to piggyback off that and close this thing out, man. Um, even if you're not the first, if it's something good, just 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 uh, fall in line, do it, and you can do it. Just because you're not the first, don't mean you can't do it better. So, um, yeah, no, yeah. I love it. And if you guys have any questions or, or anything yeah. that you want to reach out to, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content, man. So, uh, you guys, without you guys, uh, like, comment, and subscribing, uh, we can't keep this thing going. So let's keep this thing going. Let's keep the content going, and uh, we're out. Yeah, catch you on the next one.